Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of The Phoenix Phenomenon. My name's Roxanne mccarty O'Kane, and once again bringing you another incredible interview with someone who's doing some amazing things in, in the world. Um, today with me I have Average Joe's co-founder Wayne Taylor. Thanks for joining us Wayne. Absolute pleasure Roxanne, good to see you. Excellent. Yeah, good to have you. Um, so Wayne's, uh, Wayne will tell you more about the journey that led him to creating Average Joes and, and what it's all about. Um, but basically it is linked in with a desire to, um, to really connect with men on a personal level and to help them to unload the worries that, that burden a lot, of, a lot of men of all ages um, in this day and age. Um, the, the core belief, I believe, is um, just to suicide prevention and um, in 2017, 3,128 Australians killed themselves and 75% of them were men. Uh, the rates are increasing year on year and it, it really is um, a pause that's dear to Wayne's heart. So um, thanks for joining us, Wayne. We'd love to hear a bit more about um, what it was that, that led to the creation of your Men's Connection movement. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what I'll do, I'll start by how Average Joes began. Uh, we're still a, very, uh, still a very young movement or young organisation, you might call it. Uh, we began back in August last year, 2018. Um, I'd, I'd recently met a, uh, a real estate agent and instantly hit it off as, as pretty good friends. And over a period of about six months, um, we decided that every Wednesday we'd just meet up, uh, have a beer and a chat together, just him and I. Um, one purpose, obviously, to build a relationship, but um, two, get, get to know each other more and, and just see what we can do as being a part of the community and, and just the, the general man chat kind of thing that we would have. And one day we met together. And uh, we, we went to this, to this pub that we like to go to and we, we sit down, we, we order some, um, some chicken wings, can you believe it? Just simple chicken wings. And the lady said to us, she goes, oh, look, if you come every Wednesday, these things are half price. And so we kind of looked at each other and said, well, we're going to be here every Wednesday from now on. And so we had. So for a few months on end, um, we got together every Wednesday at the same time. We'd order these chicken wings and have a beer and have a chat. Now, one day I said to him, I said, mate, so I wonder how many blokes out there don't get a chance to do this. And when I mean a chance to do this, I mean, just sit down and chat. Just sit down, open up, talk about life, life's battles, the things that men face in life, the issues that come against us. I wonder how many men don't get a chance to just do this one-on-one, one-on-three -on -one, one -on or a group regardless. I said, I'm going to put a, a call out there on the community board on Facebook and let anyone know that that's local to us and to this pub, that every Wednesday we're going to be here. And if they did want to come and sit with us and have a chat, we're open, you know, and I put a few little pointers in there. Like, you know, there's, there's no need to be alone. There's no need to feel depressed and be at home by yourself. Come and have a beer and some chicken wings with us. We're always going to be here. And if you want to have a chat, we'll have a chat. Mm -hmm. I honestly didn't realise how it, the, the most simplest concept, the most simplest idea absolutely was just taken in by the community. And I put it on the community board and literally within minutes, I had private messages sent to my phone and I had um, requests for interviews on the newspaper and saying, oh, we want to come and do an interview on what you do. I <laughs> said, what we do, we drink beer and have chicken wings. I don't know if there's an interview in that, come and write an interview. So he did. He came down. Within 15 minutes, he was here. Took a couple of photos and said, what's the purpose and why are you doing it? I said, well, this is how he and I started. We just got together for a chat one-on-one. -on -one. We put the call out that if anyone wants to come and join us, they can. He said, what a great simple idea. I'm going to run with this story. And we said, well, you can't do what you like, run with the story. Literally the next day, here's the front page of the, of the, of the paper. And it said, two average Joes breaking the stigma on men's mental health. And I rang my mate. I said, have you seen the paper? He said, yeah. I said, one, I love the name average Joes. I said, but two, apparently we're breaking the stigma on men's mental health. And he said, well, he goes, I know it probably wasn't how we intended to start this, but what it's done is it's opened our eyes to what the community and what people and what men in particular are craving for. Mm -hmm. Not only was it the men that send us messages, I had so many messages from women saying, if only something as simple as this existed two months ago, 18 months ago, two years ago, my husband probably wouldn't have killed himself. He would have had something he could go to to talk to. And I'm only, this is 12 hours from Wednesday, the first interview. And I'm receiving 20 messages a day. And I rang my mate and I said, mate, this is unbelievable. I said, I'm getting messages from people. I did not realise that this was such a need in the community. Mm -hmm. So 
that, that, that started. So the next week, it kind of just took off. And that was only August. Now, since August, we've had, uh, I think we have seven, seven average Joe's groups running now across Australia. Um, we've got two more about to start um, in uh, Perth, one in Melbourne, one in Tasmania. Um, I was on the phone to a guy this morning who's going to start one in um, New Zealand. Um, one about to start in Kenya. Um, well, the interest of, and, and I'm saying to people, well, what is it that you're wanting to do? And they say, we just want to do what you're doing. It's such a simple idea, a simple concept of just creating an environment where men are comfortable to come in with this idea and with this concept behind it, that I have a comfortable place that I can come into, I can talk, I can chat, and I can go. And, it's, and that's exactly what we're creating, a simple, that kind of atmosphere. And I remember growing up in the 80s, I think I may have shared this story before. I remember growing up in the 80s as a kid, and th this, this program or this scheme or something, whatever you want to call it, came out called Neighbourhood Watch. And it was these little badges that would sit on people's letterboxes and you could walk up and down the street and one in four, one in five houses would have this little white and green badge that said neighbourhood watch. And what that symbol meant and what we could identify to it was if I'm a young kid and I'm lost or I need to use a phone to call my mum or I'm a little bit scared and I don't know what to do, that badge on that house's letterbox says that this place is a safe place that you can come into. You can come and use the phone. You can come and wake your mum. It's a safe zone. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to make Average Joe's that kind of branding, a place where it doesn't matter where you are in the world, men can go. And, and one of the slogans we're trying to really, really get take off is look for the shirts. Because our symbol, you can see on my hat here and in my shirt, it's a symbol where three or four or five guys in every group are wearing a shirt. So men can come into a pub, come into a cafe, and they can see a group of eight, ten guys sitting around with a couple of shirts on. And this shirt, this emblem, this badge, this branding says... This is a safe place for men to come in, to have a chat, to unload. It's a private place. It's a place where you can literally share off your heart. The, the conversations we have are very, they're raw, they're open, they're straight to the point. They're stuff that not normally gets spoken out uh, in public areas, especially in front of children or women. Not that they're bad, but they're just men topics that men need some other men to talk to and, and relate. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's how Average Joe's began, and that's the branding we're trying to make it. Um, be identified with is that kind of place and in regards to um, the suicide the suicide awareness suicide prevention and things like that I've had a really really hard think and a long think about it I've, I've done a lot of research a lot of reading on it and what I'm finding when it comes down to suicide is the government is very, very quick to throw money at programs that deal with the end result in other words men that are suicidal now We've got, we throw money at helplines, we throw money at counselling services, we throw money at all these things that deal with the end right at the end. But I think what we fail to see is that there's a journey that men take before they get to the end. If I, if I had an orchard and I've walked into my orchard and I've got a beautiful big, you know, trees full of oranges and I'll walk down the back and I'm an orange, love oranges and all my trees are growing oranges, but all of a sudden I've got a tree that's, that's growing apples. I can kick the tree and complain and go, oh, no, it's bearing the wrong kind of fruit. Now, if I want to try and deal with the issue by just picking the apples off all the time, I'll be there forever because the apple is connected to a vine, which is connected to a branch, which is connected to a tree, which is buried in the ground and getting watered and fed by something to continue to grow. And I think when we focus on men's suicide and suicide prevention, if we're going to deal with the end product by just trying to pick the apple all the time, we'll be there forever. What we're trying to do with Average Joe's is we're trying to bring it back and focus on the vine, focus on the branch, focus on the tree, and focus on the roots. Like, where are all these things coming from? Mm -hmm. In the process of doing that, I've discovered that it's an absolute, it's a long journey with a quick ending. And the journey involves loneliness, depression, um, rejection, issues in relationships, um, media, all these things. Now, however the tree's built up to bear that fruit can be holding from a bunch of things. You know, the, this, this tree might be bearing an apple, but the vine might be the wrong relationship, which is connected to um, what the media is telling us and how men are supposed to live. And when you've gotten fed this, connected to this, you're going to grow a certain type of fruit. And if all we're going to do is focus on trying to pick the apple off the tree, we're going to be there forever, using up a lot of time, a lot of resources by just doing that. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to bring it back. We're going, well, you know what? Let's target these, these issues and these conversations that men don't like talking about. You know, and, and what we've discovered is, in conversations with men, 
men will joke about the topics that they seriously want to talk about. Yeah. And what I mean by that is because my, my background is a plumber. I still own a plumbing business. I, I, I go to job sites quite regularly and I deal with tradesmen every single day, day in, day out. And men will sarcastically joke about what they deep down want to talk about because it's the way that men try and bring it up. Men don't want to, um, you know, put somebody out of place or be that guy that's like, oh, yeah, I've got issues. Men don't want to do that. So men jokingly about it, they'll, they'll, they'll joke about sex or they'll joke about you know, at home or, or their career, or they'll, they'll joke about something, but deep down it's because they really want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So what I've started to do is when I hear a guy sarcastically go, oh yeah, blah, 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 you know, my missus, I'll go, oh, tell us about, tell us about what's doing with missus. Oh, oh, um, yeah, well, oh. And all of a sudden they want to open up because it's, it's, it really is on their heart, you know? Mm-hmm. So what we're trying to do is now in our groups, I'm coming up with topics and I go, okay, we're going to do a topic in our meetings this week and we've got a group chat that all of our hosts are in and we're trying to create topics that go, you know what, instead of me coming and presenting, and I, and I find this with a lot of, you know, like um, men's groups, suicide prevention groups, or anything, these groups that are targeted at men, it's, it's one person sharing and trying to teach other men. Now, yes, that works to some degree, but what I've found is that I'm, I'm 39 years old, okay? Now, you can't buy experience. Experience comes from time, trial and error, risk. Experience comes from so many things. Now, at 39, I've experienced a lot, but I don't know what it's like to be 50. I don't know what it's like to be 60. I don't know what it's like to be 70. I know what it's like to be 39 because I'm, I'm 39 now. Mm-hmm. Now, if I'm just going to run a men's group, a prevention group, any kind of these kind of groups, and just try and share from me all the time, <laughs> look, it, it gets a little bit of result, but that's not the result that we're trying to do. The purpose behind what we're doing in Average Joe's is we're trying to get men to understand that you either have gone through, going through, or going to go through something that one of us here has already gone through. Mm. So when you can draw from other people's experiences, that's where we find answers. Men have this natural ability to problem solve amongst themselves. I, I've I married into a family and I've, I've married the eldest daughter of three girls. Okay. Now family holidays come Christmas time. We organize a big family trip and everyone drives from all different places and we get to the destination. The first thing men do when they get out of the car. Oh yeah, mate. How long does I get to get here? Ah, oh, 12 hours and you know, 20 minutes. Jeez, you should have taken this road. Oh really? No, no, go the back way through. All of a sudden look, men just want to <laughs> learn from each other you know, and, and teach each other and grow from each other. Men just naturally do it. Men just naturally go, how'd you do this? Nah, mate, do it like this. Oh, yeah, I'll try that. Oh, really? Yeah. That's how men do it. And that's why men, when you put a man in a position where he can use his hands, they love it. They love problem solving. So what we're trying to do within Average Joe's is go, you know what? Here's a topic. Our, our group that I, I run two groups at the moment, or three groups actually, but the two main ones that I run on the Wednesday, so I come up with a topic. We've got, I think the youngest guy that comes is 20. The oldest is, I think, 85. Now, there's a lot of life experience in that age group. A lot of life experience. So I'll come with the topic. So last, so we started a series called um, Controversial Sayings. So last week, I come with the saying. So all right, guys, controversial saying for the week. Happy wife, happy life. What are your thoughts? So I start with the youngest guy who's not even married yet. Yeah. I start with the oldest guy who's been divorced twice. And I go, what's your thoughts? Happy wife, happy life. And it opens up so much discussion on... Well, my first wife, this, and I used to focus on this, but I've learned with my second wife that if I just do this, and it's great for these 20-year-olds to hear this because he's now engaged going, I never thought of this stepping into a marriage. These are great ideas. Mm -hmm. It says to someone like myself, wow, I've started to hit that middle road of being married. No, this this year I've been married 19 years. I'm hearing from a guy who's been married 40. So when you put men together and you realise that, hey, He's either gone through, going through, or going to go through the same thing as me. What's your thoughts? I want to know. And so instead of just trying to learn from one person, it's a total open table to go, all right, what's your thoughts? And we go around the room. And quite often, like even yesterday, old Ronnie, 85 years old, rocks up and goes, I've got a topic for today. I said, Ronnie, tell us your topic. Well, this, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And it was about domestic violence. So he said, okay, Maddie, what's your thoughts? Yep, what's your thoughts? Yep, cool. And... As soon as we leave, we're only there for an hour. As soon as we leave, I get instant messages from people. Mate, that was unreal. 
I, I never thought of like this. It was just good how, how so-and-so said this, unreal. So we're trying to go, you know what, average Joe's is everything man. Let's draw back from dealing with suicide and suicide prevention itself. Let's bring it back two, three, four steps and go, let's deal with it at its root. Let's deal with it at its tree and go, okay, well, what are some things that men go down this path? Loneliness, depression, but let's talk about these topics. And so one of the things we're trying to, I guess, stay away from is our oh, average Joe's is a place where you go to if you're going to kill yourself. Yeah, of course. It's not even close to what we are. Yeah. We've got guys that come and go, you know, it's not even me. I'm, I'm not here because I'm suicidal. I'm here to make mates. And that's exactly what it's about. Everything, man. We talk about all those different things. So I, I have had um, I have had an instance when I was growing up, a little bit about myself in my history and how I, I guess, came to this, uh, this place. Um, I actually pastored in a church for many years. So my background was um, in, in the ministry for quite a, uh, some time, up until about seven years ago when I left the ministry altogether. Now, I ran a men's group. Uh, this is going back, this is, this is year 12 now, so 12 years ago now. And I had this young guy come in, literally seemed like he had it all together, dressed well, looked the part. This, and I was, all I ever did was just give him my point of view. This is what you do, this is what you do, this is what you do, right? And I never gave the guy a chance to open up, to talk freely, to learn from each other, because it was just the one way that I thought was the only way. This, do it like this, 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 and that's it. And not knowing any underlying issues or thoughts or problems this, this, this guy had, but um, he was 22 and he walked in front of a train on purpose to end his life, and it did, he killed him. And it was a wake-up call that what what goes through the mind of a 22-year-old? 22 is the, at, at 39 now, 22 is the start of life. Mm. It's the beginning. There's so much. And when I talk to guys 60, they go, 39, mate, life's just started for you. There is so much that we look back and go, life is just beginning. If you think, if you think what your issue, your thought, your problem, your circumstances now is really that bad, you're giving yourself an absolute permanent solution to a very temporary problem. Mm. And so it's, it's put me on a journey. I've always loved, I've always loved doing things with people. Um, I was taught at a very young age from a, a, a guy that I absolutely admire still to this day, who was actually the minister at um, the church I was with. He taught me from a young age that life is about others. And it really has become a motto of, of, of how I try to live, that life is about others, life's about other people. The most joy, the most happiness you get isn't when you receive anything tangible. It's when you receive that feeling of being able to impart and impact and change someone's world. And one of the things that um, he used to teach me was, you may not change the world, but you may change someone's world. And I think that's a great motto and a great slogan to live by, is that life is about other people. It really is. And as selfish as it may sound, it gives me the greatest feeling. So if we're really after these great feelings in life, I want to feel great. So you want to go and get, obtain wealth or obtain this. But the greatest richness in yourself and the greatest joy and happiness comes when you help other people. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it, it, you can't explain it. It really is that enjoyable. And I love it. My wife's so supportive of what we do at Average Day. She's like, oh, you're going again tonight? Yeah, yeah it's my third one this week, but I enjoy it. And the vision that we have for it and how the, the doors that are opening for us now, the vision that we have for it is, is phenomenal. We're, we're working on so many things. Um, we're working on an app where you can get an average Joe's app on your phone. And for example, like I still travel as part of my business. So I travel to Sydney every two to three weeks. So what I do, if I'm out of town, um, I can jump on the average Joe's app and I can type in the postcode and it will show average Joe's meeting near me. And I can go, oh, great. There's one tonight where I'm driving through. I'm going to pop in. I can go in, I can see the shirts, and I know that just walking into that pub or walking into that cafe, seeing those bunch of shirts, I can walk in, walk to the table, get those guys, introduce myself, and I'm amongst what instantly feels like a family. Mm-hmm. And that's the vision for it. That's where we're trying to take it. Yeah. I'm sorry if I've, talk, if I've spoken too much. Sorry. No, <laughs> 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 
The passion so, is tangible. I love it. <laughs> so, I'll ask me some questions. I'll also want to keep on going. So. Yeah, no, you're fine. Um, and yeah, so I guess you, you've led into the feeling of family and, um, you know, you've mentioned how, how there is such a big age range, you know, people, young men in their 20s and, and men in their 80s. Um, I wanted to get a, a sense from you, you know, some some young men or, or men of any age for that matter might feel a little bit hesitant to come in. But I know from speaking to you beforehand that, you know, they may kind of be a little bit meek to start with, but because of the environment that's created through through the process and, and what you do, um, it doesn't take long for them to, to really sort of feel into it and really relax and, and get the benefits straight away from their first connection with you guys. Absolutely. Look, with, with the younger generation, my thought is this, what better place to walk into a comfortable environment with closed communication circles so we know that hey guys whatever's spoken in this group stays in this group we can talk over and we can talk rule if i'm an 18 year old young man and i've seen and i'm seeing a group of men that are 30 40 50 60 70 it would be ridiculous to think that that wouldn't be a good place to go and sit because you are learning from men that have been there you're learning from men that have gone through what you're about to go through so to think, oh, I'm going to hang out with a bunch of oldies, it's not the case at all. Like, the, the groups are so vast in age that it's absolute perfect environment for younger, younger men. Because a younger bloke walks in and is like, oh, yeah, I'm going through this of work. Mate, you're, you're two years into your work, you're two years into your apprenticeship, you're two years into it. This is what I did when I was a second year apprentice. So I did this, blah, 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 blah. I made these changes, I did this, I altered this. Oh, wow. Like, it is the perfect environment for a young man. Mm. You're learning from men that have been there. Absolute men that have been there. I say to my kids, I have four children. My daughter's 15 and I've got three boys below her. And I say to my kids, I say, look, if I'm walking across the road and I get hit by a car and I hobble back with a big wonky leg and I'm bleeding and I, broke, and I say to them, hey, listen, don't cross the road. It's so busy you're going to hit by a car. It would be ridiculous for them to go, Mm, I know it looks pretty bad, but how about I go and experience that for myself? It'd be like, you just saw me get hit by a car. Mm. You just saw me. So what I try to say to my kids is, hey, I'm all for risk. I'm for all for you experiencing life. But if I've gone down this path and I turn and go, guys, seriously, this is a dangerous path, avoid this path. Why would any, any person with any kind of sanity would, would go, you're right, actually, I've seen it. I've, I've seen results of drugs. I've seen the results of alcoholism. I've seen the results of domestic violence. Why would I choose to go down that path so that, so that then I can say, oh yeah, you're right. Why not just take their word for it and go, hey, actually I can see the results. Mate, I'm gonna learn from that. I appreciate that. Thanks, Hapes. My wife used to laugh at me because, oh, sorry, you're gonna say something. <laughs> That's okay. Um, that leads me to another thing, you know, I mean, there, there are so many support services out there, counselors, you know, doctors, professionals. But what I wanted to ask you is wh why it is so much more powerful to hear it from, you know, average Joes, from, from guys who have, you know, actually walked the path themselves rather than, I guess, being, you know, told to, like they're, a, you know, the, the professional Absolutely. student, uh, a teacher and they're the student, you know, how, how that dynamic makes it so much more powerful for them. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I, I think, again, you could probably go back to that one word, which is experience. Mm -hmm. We, we have a lot of men come in that go, oh, yeah, mate, I, I've been a bit depressed lately. And you, and you say to them, oh, so have you gone to see any counsellors? No, nah, God, no, I'm not doing that. There's a natural wall that comes up where men don't want to go and see professional, like, to some degree, I just want to make this clear, to some degree, yeah. men don't want to go and see professionals, which is why we want to stay as average as can be. Literally, we want to remain as average Joes because what you're getting from it is men that have experienced it. It's a lot different to men that just want to teach it. It's, uh, it, you know, if, if be, my, my background being plumbing, okay, I've got the experience in it. So for me to be able to show you and teach you plumbing, you could take my word for it because I've been there. I've been there for 20 years. I've experienced it for 20 years. Compared to someone who's gone and just read the textbook and gone, hey, I've just watched this YouTube video and I've read two textbooks on plumbing. Let me show you. If I had the choice, I'd be like, uh, mate, this guy's been doing it on, on the tools for 20 years. 
you've just read a book. I appreciate it. If I get stuck, I might give you a call, but just for the time being, let me go and have a chat with this bloke because I've seen some of the plumbing is done and it is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what we're, we're aiming for as, as one of our strengths within Average Joe's is we, we don't tell people to stay away from professionals at all. There are professionals for a reason. And I, my hat goes off to them. Some of the stuff that they go through, fantastic. But what we're finding is that it, the men aren't seeking that. Men aren't wanting to go to it. A lot of men do, though, and it's fantastic. You see a lot of testimonies come out of it. Men's lives that have come away positive, fantastic. I was going to but, say, maybe it can also be a bit of a stepping stone for them. You know, they're, they're, they're stepping into something like Average Joe's, the environment, and they're getting a feel for how, how it feels to unburden themselves and how it feels to, to have that connection. And then maybe if they feel like they need more, they can absolutely. then seek that. Yeah. Absolutely. When we, especially now, um, we, we do get messages sent a lot to us. And there's been a couple where I've said, hey, listen, you're probably in the position where you might want to seek a little bit more professional help, someone who absolutely expert in study of, of what you're going through. Have you had a chance to chat with them? No, I have been thinking about it. Mate, if I was you, I'd take the next step and go and have a further chat. So again, like we, we support all that. We really do. Yeah. Um, but I guess our strength is in ex it's, it's the experience that the men have gone through. Yeah. So you're hearing from firsthand experience. Absolutely. Excellent. And I'd love for you to share, um, last time we spoke, um, you were mentioning how, you know, the whole, whole are you okay, you know, asking the closed questions when, when you pose that to, to most men. I'm generalising, yep. I'm not a man. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but you go, oh, how are you going? And they're like, yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, but it's, you know, and you, you said, you know, it's all about the open-ended questions. And, and there was a particular question that, that you are uh, a big fan of that, that really encourages, um, you know, an actual answer rather than, yeah, I'm good or, you know, things are Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love you to share yeah, about that. Well, look, I, um, yes, yeah, so, look, I'm going to stir the pot here. I know I'm going to stir the pot because it is a bit of a platform and a bit of a slogan. I'm really going to attack, to be honest. I don't like the are you okay day. I simply, I'm being honest, I don't like it. I like the fact that there's awareness and the push behind it is awareness, but asking a man if he is okay instantly puts him in a position to give you a one word answer. Mm. And the moment you give a man an opportunity to answer with one word, he's gonna do it. Hey mate, you okay? Yeah. He doesn't even think about what you're really asking, he hasn't really taken in what the question means. Men have already have, have got these big shoulders and these big, you know, like uh, able to just absorb and to wear these things for so long that they don't want to open up in a, in a simple one, you know, oh, are you okay? Yeah, you, yeah. Because we do get men that come into Average Joe's. And for example, I won't mention his name, but this one guy come in, he said, look, I was at work on the, um, on the are you okay day? And this lady asked me, are you okay? And I said, no. And he goes, and all of a sudden, this lady stood back and he goes, now nah, I'm the weirdo at work. He said, I'm treated as the weirdo. Mm. And I think that, what, look, I understand the why behind the whole are you okay day, but where are the results? Where are these? Maybe there are. I'm not seeing it. The experience of people, the feedback I get from people aren't experiencing it. Mm. Because when you do get a man, you give that man opportunity to give that one word answer, that's what it's going to give you. What we try to do in Average Joe's is we try and cut that out. The general, when we get together, when, we, when the table's growing at the start, it's, that is a very simple gesture. Hey, mate, how you doing? Yeah, good, cool. But when we start, we like to go, all right, mate, tell us about your week. Okay, well, God, Monday was pretty bad, actually. What happened Monday? Well, you know, my son or I happened to work. You're, all of a sudden, you're, you're not giving a man that, that opportunity to just give you a, yep, good, thanks, we're gone. Mm. So we're, we're diving that little bit deep and saying, no, no, you tell me about your day. You tell me about your week. I'm interested. I want to know. And so the Are You OK Day, it, in my personal opinion and the, the testimonies and that, that we get back here in Average Joe's, it isn't working. It's not working because you do get people. We used to get it. When I ran the business back in Sydney, we had quite a uh, substantial size company. And so we tried to take on the whole Are You OK Day. And I'd send it to my main guys. Hey, guys, you know, let's take a hold of this Are You OK 
payday. And you'll see it, two blokes in a U. So we drive along, hey, mate, you okay? Yeah, you okay? Ha, ha, ha. And it's taken like that. Yeah. It's not taken. Yeah. And even if deep down one of them isn't okay, he feels that he's not in a position to say he's not. But then, like my other friend, when you do say, actually, I'm not okay, all of a sudden people are like, oh, oh what have I got myself into? Um, yeah. I'm going to deal with it. Yeah. I'm not okay. Mm-hmm. So obviously the, the, the purpose behind us creating that environment is for men to go, listen, tell us about your week. We want to know. Tell us, start with Monday. Monday through Wednesday, go on, you've got 10 minutes, tell us about your week. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, Monday was, was, was pretty terrible. And then someone pipes up. Oh yeah, I had that. I had that same experience. We had um, the very first week that Average Joe's began. It was um, a really interesting story, but this is how it, it puts Average Joe's in the perspective of really what it is. So the very first week, we had a real influx of people because it made media, it made news, it went through internet quite fast. So we had quite a good group the very first week. Now, I've I've walked up to the bar to order a beer. And I've met these two guys that have also walked up at the same time. They're part of today's group of average shows. Now, they've never met each other, and I had never met either of them. So all three of us, we're all new to each other. So we're at the bar. Oh, g'day. Hi, oh, yeah, nice to meet you. What's your name? Yeah, cool. Have a chat. I started to talk to one bloke, and he said, oh, yeah, he goes, I, um, I battle a lot with depression. He said, it's, it's really, it's, it's been hard, you know. Talking about this, talking about that, started to open up a little bit more. and said, look, you know, there's been quite some times even just this past year he said, where I, um, I just want to end it all. And I've considered it. I, I go down into my basement and I, I plan it, but I just don't go through with it. I don't, I don't know why I go, don't go through with it, but I just, I always pull out at the last minute and I, I, I don't end up killing myself. Then the other guy, he says, well, you know what? He said, I said, I battle the same thing. He said, I, I find myself quite depressed and I, I question, is it easier to leave this world? Is it much easier? Now, He's not even 30 seconds into explaining himself on how he deal, you know, what he's going through. And bloke number one, he pops up again and he says, oh, mate, when you're doing that, what I've found is, you know, filling up your calendar and, and getting better friends and blah, 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 and giving this guy an answer. Now, two minutes ago, this was the guy that was saying he wants to end his life. Mm. He's now giving advice to this other guy. And I stopped him. I said, mate, so do you see what you're doing? I said, this is the purpose on what we're doing here in Average Joe's. You're, he, he's going through what you've just gone through. And now here you are giving this guy one-on-one pure experience, first-hand experience to this guy and how you battled it and how you got through it. Mm-hmm. And he stopped and he said, I see what you're trying to do here. He said, I see what you're trying to do. I said, that's what we're trying to do. It's that. It's getting the men together that are doing it all life together and going, I've been there. This is it. And so um, getting back to sorry, the are you okay day. Yeah, not a not a fan of it to be honest. Yeah. It doesn't work. It simply doesn't work. And we can try and convince ourselves that it does. I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, okay. And and coming back to, to the process, the question process, tell me about your week. Do you find that um, among the group you you might even get, you know, some some men who wander in to kind of check it out. They may not actually realise I guess the strength of what it is that they are experiencing until they get that chance to verbalize it and to get it out in that group environment. Do you find that there, you you do see a lot of light bulb moments during those kinds of conversations? Absolutely. You you see it on their face. Absolutely. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, So just yesterday. So one of the things we try and do when we do an average Joe's is obviously there's, there's a lot of walking up to the bar, grabbing a drink or grabbing a coffee or whatever. So we always do a bit of a, a bit of a scope around the bar and we look for blokes that are sitting by themselves. So just yesterday, I've walked up and I've ordered a beer and I've turned around and here's this bloke in the, in, on, in the pub by himself with a beer. So I've walked up and I said, mate, are you having a beer by yourself? And he said, yeah. I said, mate, don't have a drink by yourself. I said, we're the average Joe's group. Bring your beer over with us and sit in the table. And he goes, oh, what do you do? I said, mate, we talk everything about man. He goes, really? I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, Oh, well, maybe next time. I said, no problem. So I went back and sat back down. Five minutes later, he walks over and he said, is this what you do? We said, yeah. And he goes, and this is what you talk about? He said, yeah, this is exactly what we do. He said, wow. He said, oh, I'm going to come back next week. So that's just a simple, he only saw like 30 seconds of our conversations. But the, the, the regulars that are there, especially me, I'm probably the biggest light bulb moment because I love it. 
especially when a topic gets brought up and I hear and, you know, oh, wow, yeah, that's a great thought. I don't know how many times I've said, geez, that's a great thought. <laughs> because it really is. I, look, I can't, you can see that I'm passionate about this and I want men to experience it. Going back to the days where men would talk amongst themselves, empower one another, encourage one another, live with a purpose. And it's um, what, what we're actually finding. I, I, we had um, two meetings yesterday and the sad, the sad truth that we're really starting to discover is men, men are starting to feel like they've been disempowered. Mm-hmm. Men feel like they're losing the voice, their own voice in the community. And it's, it's, it's paying its toll and the result is suicide. Mm-hmm. It really is. Where, where the, the topics that get, like, again, the topics that get brought up that lead down to these discussions, it was a real eye-opener to hear that we're, we're, we're feeling disempowered. We're feeling like our voice in the community is no longer relevant. And it's, it's sad. And I mean this in no disrespect. I really hope this comes out the right way. But it seems as if the last 15 to 20 years, we've tried to empower women so much that men have felt disempowered. Mm. Men have felt like they don't have a role in the home anymore. They don't have a role as a father or as a husband. They don't have a role in the workplace. And men are feeling not respected, not welcomed and not needed. And in in doing so, men feeling this way, they're feeling like they don't have purpose to live. And it's, um, so I I don't know how I got off to that that subject with them, but that's what we're finding. So, Yes, there are a lot of light bulb moments answering your question. A lot of light bulb moments. You see it on their faces, especially the older blokes. It's um, you would think that getting to an age of eighty-five or eighty, that you know you've experienced everything. That they're the ones that message a lot. They get a lot out of it. A lot of light bulb moments. So, yeah. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Okay, I've got talking. <laughs> Stop apologising. It's fine. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and yes, I, obviously from the get-go, um, this concept and this movement has, has been just exploding. You know, you, you're expanding not only around Australia, but now looking at um, New Zealand as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, international growth already, and we're not even 12 months in. What are August last year? So, um, I, yeah, I would love to hear your, you mentioned before your grand dream plan, you know, being able to go anywhere in the world and, and being able to connect up with, with an average Joe's group and, and just have that sense of like-mindedness um, scattered everywhere. But um, yeah, I'd love to find out what, what's next on the horizon for, for average Joe's for, for this year. You've mentioned the app, um, a few more groups going on. How can people get involved and, and really help this movement to grow? Yeah, look, I guess one of the biggest ways that people can be involved in is to contact us and ask what's involved in hosting one of these things. Because when you realise how easy it is, it literally it costs nothing. Local businesses love having us there because we instantly grow their business because once a week we're bringing 10 or 12 guys in there. So local businesses love having us there. Hosting, it costs nothing. It's so easy. It doesn't require you to have a doctorate, um, you know, a, a what do you call it? A, anything, a, a label or a title of any sort. It, we are after the most average people there are, because what I've found is that the moment you give a, um, I'll give you an example. I was talking to an older gentleman the other day in the park up at um, Malulabar Beach, and having a bit of a chat. And I started by saying to him, "So, oh, mate, tell us about your week." And he got on, and about twenty minutes into talking, and he stopped and he looked at me. He goes, "I've never opened up like this to anyone before." He said, you're not a priest, are you? I said, no, I'm not a priest. And he goes, oh, good, because if you were, I would stop. And it made me realise that men want to talk to men. Men don't necessarily want to talk to men that have a title, a label, the doctorate, the this, the that, because all, all of a sudden there's this off gap that they're like, okay, well, you're an authority over me. Yeah, no worries, thanks, mate. I'll take your advice here, call and walk away. Men want to talk to the average joke. They're just the average bloke. For me, I, there's, I can't be any more. I'm the most average bloke you'll meet. I talk with the most ocker, Aussie accent. I do everything. Like, I'm not anything. I don't have a label. And I think that's what the men love. 
is that it's that simple that we don't carry those doctrines. So for people to want to get involved and help and, you know, be involved or even host one of these things, it requires nothing of you other than one hour a week sitting down and having a beer or having a coffee. Literally, when I host ours, the most I talk is, all right, gents, tell us about your week. Yeah, great, fantastic. All right, topic for today is this. Ronnie, we'll start with you. That's it. It doesn't, it like there's nothing else required. I throw on a shirt, which I provide. I buy all these shirts myself. I provide everybody, anyone that wants to host um, an AJ's group, tell me a shirt size. I send you a shirt. You can have a hat. I've got hats, shirts galore. I'll send you a shirt. I'll send you a hat. We do have a little thing that we have that I've created called a code of conduct, which there are just, there's only five very, very minor things that we go, hey, I'm going to host one of these events five very simple guidelines we want you to do you know one of them is this is not a place to sell a product you're not don't use this as a place to sell you know your, your hidden agenda you know it's also not a place where you bring about your own religious thoughts and your own religious ideas keep that outside of the age goes this is not a platform to preach your belief we're literally our average days is what we are we're not trying to you know so keep that to yourself um, and things like, you know, respecting the place that you're in. So they're very, very simple guidelines that just go, hey, you know what, I want to host one of these things. What's involved? Mate, very simple. Tell us your search size. Pick a venue. I'll chat with the owner of the venue. See if they can promote it with us. We'll contact local media. We'll get a, try and get a paper shoot for you so your community knows you're there. I'll come down for the first three, four, five, however many you need. Um, let's get it going. So even down in Sydney, like I... I've been to, I think, five of the ones in Sydney, uh, um, the first few that started, and now they're doing their own thing. That's great. I see photos of week when it's finished. They send a photo, they post it to the Facebook group, and it just puts a smile on my face. Big photo of men of all ages get together going, what a day. So as far as getting involved, it's very, very simple. It's um, not much to it. <laughs> Excellent. That's great. And for, yeah, absolutely. And um, and for those who are watching that are you know really feeling that they that they want to connect as as a you know as a participant, um, I know the app is on the way. But until that arrives, what's the best way for them to find out where their closest average Joe meeting is? Okay. Uh, the biggest um, channel that we're using at the moment is our Facebook page, which is just called. Average Joes. Um, we have an Average Joes closed group also on Facebook where men can jump into the closed group, ask any questions, things like that. So it's more of a discussion or topic kind of thing. But as far as our page that carries our branding and our promotions and what we're doing and what we're all about is our main Average Joes page, which literally is the black square, the black emblem with the white square. So once you type in Average Joes on Facebook, very, very easy to find. Um, everything goes through to me and also to Elliot, who is the other co-founder of AJ's. We receive everything. We go through it all together. So, yeah. Who? Who? <laughs> yeah, I did actually tell him about today, but he couldn't even make it in today anyway. So right. but he's a good guy. He's a on you, Elliot. Yeah. Hey, on you, Elliot. Yeah. <laughs> he's good. He's really good. So that's yeah. So people, Facebook at the moment. We've got a website that's nearly finished. Um, it's just been, to be honest, it's just been so overwhelming that we're trying to keep up with the pace that it's, it's trying to keep us growing we're, we're just trying to keep up so it's fantastic great place to be in absolutely that's excellent all right and um just wanted to see if there were any other i guess uh, words of wisdom you wanted to leave our listeners with today um i'm guessing you know you, your core message is that you know blokes you don't have to do it alone there's there's communities there there's you you, you know everyone has uh, experienced similar things to what you have, but you can put your own spin on that because, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I guess if I could leave with one message is that Average Joe's is not about suicide prevention. It's about men living their best, most impacting, purpose-driven life. That's what it's about. It's everything men. When we deal with these core issues way back here, it solves the issue way at the end. So mm. it's, it's, it's not about a place for down and outers. It's not that. But those people, are like, we're all welcome. It's for all things men. We talk great topics. We go to some great chats. It's a fantastic place to be.
So men, get involved. Please, contact us. Hit us up on Facebook or send me a private message. It's they're so easy to host and you will love it. Make great friends. It's such a great place, great environment to be in. Excellent. Thank you so, so much for your time, Wayne. I really appreciate that and such an amazing message to be able to share as well. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for your time. No, fantastic. Thank you, Roxanne. I really appreciate the, um, just the support you've given. I do appreciate it. Excellent. All right. And for those of you watching or listening at home, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting croaky now. Um, thank you again for joining us for another episode of The Phoenix Phenomenon. We will continue to bring um, many amazing interviews like this into the future. So if you want to make sure you don't miss any of them, uh, like and subscribe and you will uh, keep abreast of, of all of these amazing things that are happening within our community. So thank you again, Wayne. I hope you have an amazing day. Likewise. Thanks, Roxanne.